here in this video we are going to see a problem in which we are going to design the dimensions for a given column here is the question i'll write whatever is given here in the form of a data now it is given that a hollow circular steel column 8 meter long so i'll write the type it is hollow circular column which is 8 meter long so the length of the column is 8 meter that is 8000 mm next supports an axial load of 200 kilo newton so i'll write it as load p 200 kilo newton so 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton next both the ends of the column are fixed so i'll write it here both ends of column are fixed then the internal diameter of the column is 0.8 times the external diameter so i'll denote internal diameter as small d it is 0.8 times of capital d given which is the external diameter using euler's formula determine the external diameter and thickness of metal for this column so i have to use euler's formula and find external diameter and the thickness of metal to be used for this column take factor of safety as 4 fos as 4 and capital e that is young's modulus is 2 into 10 raised to 5 mega pascal so it is 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square now since they have given factor of safety and we have to use euler's formula so we would require euler's load it means the problem in the problem the load which they have given this axial load of 200 kilo newton it is nothing but the safe load because we will use this safe load and fos to get euler's load so now with the data with us let us try to get the solution to this problem now in the solution part first i'll draw the cross section so this is the column cross section here i have denoted external diameter as capital d internal diameter as small d and this is the metal thickness so here is the thickness of metal so in this problem we have to find out how much is this capital d that is the external diameter and the metal thickness here now as they have given axial load and factor of safety and in the problem they have given us to use the euler's formula so first i'll say that since safe load is given by p suffix safe that is equal to euler's load upon the factor of safety so therefore p safe becomes p suffix e upon fos so finally we want euler's load that will be p safe into fos your p safe the safe load in the problem given as 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton factor of safety 
it has four. So Euler's load comes out to be eight hundred into ten raised to three newton. Now in the problem, we would be using this load formula. Next, I'll write the formula of Euler's load that since Euler's crippling load is given by P suffix E, it is equal to pi square E I minimum upon effective length square So I'll keep this as equation number one. Now we have Euler's load. Pi is a constant. Capital E is given in the problem. Two into ten raised to five. Only unknown is I minimum. So I'll go and find this. That therefore minimum moment of inertia for hollow circular. section i minimum is equal to i x x and it is equal to i y y because for a circular section or hollow circular section moment of inertia about x and y they are same so therefore i minimum will be pi by 64 capital d is to 4 minus small d is to 4 now in the problem they have given this relation of small d that is small d is 0.8 times of capital d i'll put the value here so therefore i minimum will be equal to pi by 64 capital d is to 4 minus 0.8 capital d is to 4 so hence I minimum will be equal to now here if we see we have pi by sixty four we can take d raised to four common so in the bracket we have one raised to four minus zero point eight raised to four so therefore I minimum here I am going to calculate this entire value one raised to four minus zero point eight raised to four. Multiplied by pi by sixty four, my answer will be zero point zero two eight nine capital D raised to four. That is, I am getting the minimum moment of inertia in the form of capital D. Now I'll say that therefore, put all values in equation number one. So in equation one we have first of all Euler's load. That we have found out, it was eight hundred into ten raised to three is equal to pi square capital E value that is two into ten raised to five given. Now minimum moment of inertia we have found out zero point zero two eight nine d raised to four divided by effective length. Now. If we see in the question, it was given that both the ends of the column are fixed. So if we have both the ends of the column as fixed, then this much is the length of the column, and when the load is acting, at that time the column will bend in this way. that is it will start bending away from the fixed end and it will stop bending just before the free end so this much is the length which bends or which actually takes part in the bending that is called as effective length and for such a condition effective length is taken as l by 2 that is half of the length now the length was given as 8000 so divided by 2 effective length is 4000 mm So I'll put this value of four thousand mm in the denominator. Four thousand, it is square. So here I have put all the values 
in equation number one, effective length square. Now, when I calculate this, I'll get d raised to four on one side, shift all the terms on the other side. So my d raised to four answer comes out to be 224.38 into 10 raised to six. Now I want the answer of d. So taking the square root twice, therefore I'll get the answer of capital D. So now after I'm calculating the square root twice, that is it was d raised to four. So taking square root twice, I'll get the answer of D and that comes out to be 122.39. Since it is diameter, I'll round off the value and make it as 123 mm. So here I've got the external diameter. So this is the first answer. Now in the question, they have given that small d is 0 0.8 times of capital D. So I'll say that therefore small d is 0 0.8 capital D. So it is 0 0.8 into 123. So here I get small d value as 98.4 mm. Now after getting this, we want metal thickness. So this metal thickness T can be calculated as it will be capital D minus small d, which will give us 2t. So here this would be 2t is equal to capital D minus small d thickness will be on both the sides. So thickness becomes capital D minus small d by 2. This is the formula. So therefore, I'll write down thickness of metal small d is equal to capital D minus small d divided by 2. So therefore, this will be 123 minus 98.4 divided by 2. That comes out to be 12.3 mm. This is the second answer. And once we have calculated the external diameter and the thickness of metal, we can say that both the unknowns are known. And with this, we complete the question.